Вітаю. На прес-майданчику Украї... Uh, welcome in the Europress uh, Press Media Center. We are going to talk about the local election 2020 and new system and new territorial basis. On July 15, uh, the Orkhon Radio Ukraine actually um, uh, described the date when the elections for the local authorities, villages, or etc. are going to be held. Uh, um, actually, we do not have any clarity about the Donetsk and Lugansk um, uh, regions due to the fact that there are no uh, opportunity to present the common interests of the communities of those territories. So, uh, on July 16th, the Parliament of Ukraine voted for the uh, draft law of 1951 and to introduce some amendments into the existing legislation to criminal code, to code on administrative violations and the law on the Central Election Committee and the Central Electorate, uh, Electoral Register. Also, the Home Rada adopted the uh, resolution according to which it eliminated 134 um, old uh, districts and actually they formed 490 new ones. About those issues we are going to, to talk about um, uh, with our representatives. And we have uh, the following guests, Andre Gevko, member of the Central Electoral Commission, Alina uh, Boykon, the uh, MP of 80th uh, Convocation, Alexander Kovogorny, head of the Association of the, uh, let's say, uh, Amalgamated Territories, um, the, and the Igor Abramuk, Director of Development, and others. And we are going to remind you that we, are, we have this special online transmission, and anybody who wishes that, we can uh, go to the YouTube of the Ukraine Media Crisis Media Center in Ukraine and English. We are going to start right away, so Andrei, maybe we'll start with you. And yesterday, the goals of Ukraine actually published the law of Ukraine on the regular, on, on the madness to be introduced to the electoral code. In your opinion, what is the legislative basis, uh, to which extent it's really good in order to have to hold the, uh, the new elections? Well, actually, it depends how, um, how we're going to have those elections, and then we can say whether it was high quality or not. It's very difficult to assess whether it's 100% efficient or not so far, and I believe that those local elections will show how those amendments are adopted, how quality they are. Are or were, and I believe in any process we uh, I witness there are no limits to perfection. But I believe that those amendments which have been voted for by the Workhorn Rada will allow us to hold those elections on a certain um, positive level. And again, since we have a new electorate system and we have some problems associated with change the format of that and the, in the local electoral commissions, they are going to determine the limits of the, uh, let's say, powers and the um, of the local electoral committees, and this is not going to be an easy task, but we are we are working on that. I believe that if between all the subjects of the electoral process, we are, we will have to we we will actually manage to install necessary level of that, that everything will be okay. In our turn, the central electoral committee, we are going to. Uh, to be an example to follow, and if we start to trust each other then, uh, into each procedure involved, then it would be easier for us to have those very uneasy and complex elections. I believe that the quarantine has been prolonged till the end of uh, August, and under the conditions of quarantine, the elections, to hold the elections is still more difficult. This is uh, related to uh, to voting and actually uh, the the counting of the votes and uh, you know so not only the central election committee but all those changes and amendments which have been introduced to the electorate legislation there are some provisions made for the powers and the, um, the uh, for the cabinet ministers of Ukraine and the minister of health of Ukraine in particular in order for us all to do everything possible to ensure the safe and secure uh, process of those elections. Thank, thank you, Andre. Uh, Ms. Olena, you're uh, an expert. What do you think, how, to which extent the Central Election
election committee is prepared uh, for these um, for those elections, and uh, do we have everything necessary, you know, to ensure the high quality elections? Actually, we can switch over to new some novelties because there are a lot of uh, questions in the social networks. We can s talk about the election quarters and there, uh, something like that. Well, I do support this. Is that the, the 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 next elections are going to be very complicated and complex, and we're going to assess and give the assessment of those uh, elections on October twenty fifth. It's very difficult now to talk about the the amendments introduced into the new legislation. They have more reservations than, um, let's say, a positive uh, things. I can only wish to all the uh, Central Election Election Committee members, members of elections, uh, you know, uh, to, to to, to do everything possible. Speaking about the notice introduced, but we'll start, we have to start the most complicated, more complex notice, the change of the electoral system. Everybody um, talked that the the change of the electoral system is not acceptable one year before the elections. That was the recommendation of the, um, the Venice um, Committee, and everything said uh, came up with the recommendation of what has to be done for the old elections. But one year later, we uh, actually I witnessed a lot of, um, of amendments, a lot of different amendments in the criminal code about the uh, uh, local uh, self government. All those are uh, let's say large scale ones, and so far uh, so far nobody can understand. Uh, those amendments and changes which uh, they have been introduced. We have to talk very sincerely and openly and, um, you know, let's say, in a very informative way about those changes in, to, in order to be prepared for this process. This new electoral system, the, the, the local uh, village uh, uh, councils will be elected if they have more than 10,000 voters in those communities which there are less than 10,000 um, uh, uh, voters there will be kind of a mandate majority voting if the um, local uh, village chairman when we have the, um, the, the voters more than 75,000 they are going to be based on the um, absolute majority if somebody in order to be elected has to uh, have 50 percent of the voters plus one. Then if the less number of the voters, uh, then we are going to have a relative majority. So this system, uh, you're talking about the downsizing the threshold to the 10,000 10, is much concern, not because those changes have been introduced just on the eve of the electoral process. We call those process dangerous for the local self-governance uh, take into consideration when you actually appoint somebody or you can some candidates for to be elected then uh, this can be done only by the political parties uh, to which extent the political parties are prepared to uh, carry the uh, responsibility for their candidates and to which extent um, morally and uh, legally the voters are prepared to support this or another party, this is something uh, which we are have not been prepared or not yet actually prepared for. If you're talking about the Constitution of Ukraine, the local uh, self-governance is a guarantee that the local citizens through their executive bodies are uh, going to impact or to influence the, uh, the process of election. If we are going to have the party-based system, I do have a lot of doubt whether the local communities are going to influence this process. Of course, in this case, the um, certain parties will influence and not all of them but by the way not all the parties because not in every district um, we do not have those kind of profoundly based vertically organized political structures not in, everywhere so i would like to draw your attention please uh, 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 please um, uh, pay attention which party is going to um, uh, to dominate this or another candidate. If the, this is not the case, maybe the party does not uh, trust their colleagues or there is no party selling you know, this within a locality. Uh, another change, uh, imperative mandate. This is uh, something new which has been introduced into the electoral election legislation. That means that under certain circumstances, this party can actually call back uh, their candidate um, and uh, and I would not call it partization, but kind of centrism. 
and the departure from the centralized procedure. Unfortunately, I believe that such processes are not in favor of the uh, reform of the local self-governance. And actually, we are going to assess uh, these new novelties not on October 25th, but much later, when nobody can actually will be able to influence, and when uh, the interests not of the local um, the citizens' interests will be represented by a local party, uh, let's say, uh, sales. Well, we can talk about the uh, kind of communication between the party and the local community if we are talking about the calling back of their candidates. Well, this is this decision is going to be taken by the political party, number one. Number two is a kind of uh, subject to discussion because one of the, let's say, conditions or, let's say, prerequisites for callback is, let's say, non-representativeness um, of the party because there is no, nothing is mentioned about the political party program or something like that. So we have a lot of subjective things and I don't think that will be a kind of objective uh, reasons or objective, let's say, steps taken in order to call back the candidates. And this is uh, again uh, brings about much concern. Again, if we are talking about, sorry to say that, but um, if we are talking about the Central Election Committee, the reform of the uh, letter, and the, uh, let's say, the manager or the supervisor of the Central election committee and this makes provision for some amendments to be introduced to the law on the election um, uh, what happens actually we are going to eliminate one of the units as subjective units and actually they're going to have uh, the old system of registration and now they're going to use a new one this is very dangerous taking into consideration that today according to the changes of the uh, territorial, uh, let's say, administ administration structure, we have to in register several millions uh, of the local voters. And uh, if you are talking about the registration of those who are going to be responsible for that, again, they have a lot of reservations and doubts about that. Can we talk about the supervisory or supervisor system, which can be guided by some department and from the point of view of the national security who is going to to be responsible for the preservation and protection of the personal data previously the um, central election committee was uh, um, uh, responsible for that but after those amendments are going to be introduced we are talking about the, uh, uh, the manager or the secretary of the central election committee Territorial, uh, again, we are talking about territorial elections. So there are some uh, questions as well. They removed from the code the issue of the uh, prohibition of changes of the districts and the constituencies during the election process. During this process, it can be done, but this is kind of a threat. Um, uh, implicit threat. Uh, this is not wrong. Uh, this is wrong, actually, but anyway, the, it's uh, what we have. Again, there is another novelty, and we all heard the, the subject of uh, the subjects uh, the, uh, could be the, um, let's say, uh, the application uh, individual from the group of um, not only factions, but the groups of Rikon Murad, and those groups have the same um, powers and authority to do that. And so let's uh, see, we have five factions and two groups. Seven subjects for application, in which are meant to be compulsorily, uh, mandatorily included. And uh, those subjects can actually come up not only with one candidate, but with two. That means that they are going to fill completely all the quarters. That means that the um, extra parliamentary factions almost do not have any chance to become uh, members of this um, uh, process or the uh, actors in this process. So there are no quantity uh, who can actually become members of the Central Election Committee. No, there are some quantities, but um, let's, let's just count. Uh, if we're talking about between 10 and 14 members, and there is a 14 for mandatory inclusion, but can a, an extra uh, parliamentary uh, faction become a member? No. So how, my question is, how it can be done? There can be some agreement uh, uh, reached during some conferences or something like that, and how the voters will uh, be aware about that. Uh, according to the new amendments, till the 
on the 5th of July, they, um, they, the, until July 25, they have to present the conditions uh, which have been agreed upon with one group, with one party, about the cooperation. Then the legislator, uh, uh, the legislator doesn't say anything about that, and any more about that, you know. So I don't know whether it would be sufficient to do that because we are talking about the in-house pol policy regarding the, um, the in-house documents of the party. And you know, Walt, if you are talking about the representation of the Central Election Committee, what representative office should be set up? And what, according to the amendments into the co made in, uh, introduced into the code, uh, uh, can uh, we talk about if we are talking about the district committees, if we are talking about the pilot projects during the pro election pro 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 process? And actually, the experts recommended not to give such powers and authorities to them. But anyway, they revisited uh, this, uh, this situation and they supported the Central Election Committee to carry out experiments uh, according to, to the opinion they have and voting uh, using the technical means and the pro uh, software means and counting of the votes using the technological means and then uh, they reporting uh, based on the uh, results of the voting using this specific system. In this case, the code may not be uh, let's say used, and uh, these the, those amendments and changes have been voted for during the first and second reading. I understand maybe I abuse your time, but anyway, those things are very important. If we are talking about the dual uh, nature of the um, nomination, the candidates, uh, these or not, person can actually you know, realize the uh, election rights. Um, offering his or her candidate uh, two different bodies, but they forgot to mention what will happen if the same person will get obtain two ma mandates. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask you another, you could, how many, how many uh, you have voters, unfortunately 15,000. Okay, now based on the example um, uh, mentioned before, if the um, the let's say the, the mayor is going can can actually um, uh, try to be elected into a local uh, council, if he would, that does want to remain the mayor or the chairman of the municipal council, they can actually be going to, to be elected for the municipal council. You know, in our valid legislation, it uh, doesn't provide for the possibility of the same person to have two different mandates, as we say, to sit on two different chairs. Um, there is only one amendment, what has to be done if, you know, which, uh, uh, deals with the chairman or the, let's say, of the uh, council or, um, to become the member of the council, to be, remain the mayor of the city. If there is still some time, we have to introduce some changes, amendments, modifications maybe. We have some more time. We are going to work for two hours. Uh, Alexander Korini uh, is going to leave us in half an hour. Unfortunately, he has to attend another meeting, so after all, um, your colleague, we are going to give you the floor. Okay, we are going to be talking about the, um, the, the let's say, the special monetary, um, let's say, um, uh, some moment they have to pay to, to, to you and they are going to kind of collateral, monetary collateral. Um, they, everybody has to pay for that, but they, they, some is different. They, this kind of money is not going to deposit, deposit yeah. Uh, they are not going to return this depo deposit in any case. Imperative mandate is a very big problem, a very big problem from the point of view of the partisanship and from the point of view of non-democratic principle of, let's say, of governance. Uh, this is not a Euro European experience. If the voters elect somebody, why the party has to call back this candidate? The party only can denominate the candidate. They are responsible for ideological support they are not the voters, the parties. So this principle of calling back uh, by not those who actually elected this person, not by the voters, is not 
a democratic principle in Oklahoma that this is the first and the last elections that we are going to talk about the imperative mandate. Well, not maybe not the first we had uh, the, 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 we, we, we had such a situation, but uh, and uh, we have never actually applied this. Uh, uh, it, they s talked about the popular initiative, not the party initiative. Uh, Andre mentioned that the ballot has been changed, but let's imagine the situation that, for example, uh, somebody gets four ballots for the chairman of the local council, the district uh, um, the council, the regional council, maybe they will have the fifth ballot for the people deputy of um, Ukraine. So five different ballots, and they, each of them are going to have um, different uh, formats. Uh, you, on the screen you can say um, uh, the, uh, the examples let's say of the models of those ballots. If, again, we are talking about the proportional system. We have to have two different ways how to fill in. Again, there is some threat. First, this kind of tick off for the party and then for the, uh, let's say, uh, somebody from the list. In order to properly fill in the, those ballots, we have to take care of the uh, correct informative policy. We have to, to have kind of uh, uh, informed, informed um, uh, approach to the um, uh, to voting or to the election. It should not be kind of the um, occasional, let's say, um, uh, incidental um, election. We had some of the non-valid balance, a lot of those, because the voters uh, wrongly filled in those kind of the template um, balance. There is another danger associated with that. And the fact that they um, change in, in, the, in the last minute the format of the protocol without any protection, which was printed, uh, actually published on the printer, um, and those amendments were supported. And, uh, but anyway, this ballot is not well protected, and again, it's printed on the printed machine, on the Xerox. This is again another danger. So we have the three dots. Uh, for that, maybe my colleagues will uh, elaborate on what I said. Um, Alexander Corini, uh, you you have a lot of experience as the uh, municipal uh, chairman, um, and this kind of um, uh, uh, election, for example, you cannot actually, um, uh, let's say, uh, such as a candidature for for this or another. Election. Uh, sometimes we have the same candidates in different lists, and now we are talking about different system. Unfortunately, uh, Irina, I started to talk about the elections. You might be somebody remember it. it happened three years back, and in those days we mentioned that maybe you should uh, we should talk about the uh, major majority system for the local. Um, a system because everybody has to understand who this or that person voted who specifically for. We had a kind of uh, precedent when many, uh, in many localities, um, uh, many of the villages or the settlements lost the opportunity to have their own representative. Uh, only there was a kind of acting village elder, village headman, but generally speaking, there was not a single candidate from this or not territory. So they were deprived of the right or the possibility to to, to support the financial, fiscal interests or something like that, budgetary interests. So we wanted to, uh, to, re, to, to, to preserve the majority. For example, when we voted for Wanenko, he actually, we, we knew, we, we signed the protocol in our village. And, uh, and then, all of a sudden, the number three person, according to the election uh, results, became number first. So my question is, when we're speaking about this figure, 10,000, why not 9,999 9, or, or 5,000, whatever? So we were talking about 35 and 50. Um, so we, we said that we should not take the uh, village. Uh, let's say uh, committees. Unfortunately, they 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 came down to ten thousand. Well, I can't understand why not give this opportunity to everyone, you know, for the elections. So I'm not going to talk about the issue of balance. Uh, Alena and Andre maybe can talk more about that. They are experts in those issues. I'm practical man. I would like to talk what we're 
I witnessing today. Today, 100 days before the elections, to change the system, and the majority of the amalgamated communities, and for the first time ever in their existence, to make them force them to take part in elections. This is not only non-European practice. This kind of chaos. And if you're talking about some of the nuances which my colleagues mentioned about the protocols, etc., etc., I can see that everybody wants to, uh, to, to, to have when the elections do not de depend on the uh, people, not on the citizens, but some party, let's say, um, uh, uh, party leaders. And this reminds me of the, um, of the chain dog. And um, somebody was going to um, uh, to abuse our rights. According to the Constitution, I have the right to be elected and elect, irrespective of my religious likings or dislikes or whatever else. Why, why we have this kind of monetary deposit, by the way, which is not going to be returned uh, in the long run? This is a kind of economic barrier for a person who would like to to to, to be elected but they do not have necessary resources. A rich man with many many children, he can pay, let's say, uh, 16,000 uh, grivna or whatever. What I mean to say, and uh, those people who understand how they can want to make this, this money later when they're elected or return at least their money. So, so those limitations or restrictions, again, we have some new information on the screen. For example, if in the city, um, uh, 10,000, uh, then this will be, let's say, uh, 4,500 uh, 4, 4, uh, deposit. Uh, if there is about 95, then we are talking about 17,000 grivna. But anyway, we actually uh, limited um, the uh, the, the, the opportunity for the people to offer their own candidatures. Tell me, please, it's necessary to be a member of this party to be elected according to the constitution in place. According to the new uh, new law, this is a mandatory condition. If I would want to be a deputy, I must visit my party uh, chief of my party head and ask him to include me. Well, I understand to be to have a chance to be elected, we have to be at the top top of the list. Uh, what is the necessary conditions? Uh, several uh, higher education, diploma, or something like that. When I am absolutely against this kind of partisanship, um, uh, God forbid, and I believe, and I, I now see it in the localities, those who actually think how to ensure their place in the list. You wanted to, 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 to listen to some of the uh, MPs. Uh, we have um, uh, Vitaly, please join us here because you know, actually it does not concern you personal, but there were some questions to the legislators. We, 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 we actually don't discuss it with Vitaly about this threshold of 10,000 and, and more or less the normal figure is 35,000, but unfortunately the result of our talk with Vitaly, 10,000. I don't think that uh, to be elected as a candidate, a uh, person have to go to the party leader and uh, kneel before him, you know. Even at the level of districts, there are a lot of well-structured and ideologically developed parties. No, there are not many. This is not the United States. We do not have those parties. Do we want to elect uh, people who represent those parties and then to restructure them as kind of later, later? Or how, how are we going to do that? Today, what, what happens uh, today in the, uh, let's say, the low, lower level? These are not parties, they have another candidate. Uh, they, they will visit another party. They also have their own candidate. You know, I really want, hate to think that, uh, God forbid, that we are going to return to the uh, to have uh, some old parties uh, like with Renke, etc. Why not? There, are, there is opportunity or possibility to have more a necessary number of the candidates. Nobody can actually uh, find themselves in the uh, limited number of the big parties, like five big parties. So take in consideration that we uh, deprive the rights of the majority of the villages to have their candidates in the the community councils, this is a big negative um, uh, thing. 
we have to include the people who we know. Usually we are talking about um, actually the people who are not from the ter territorial communities, maybe from the territorial communities, but maybe some well-known uh, doctors or somebody else, but definitely not the people from the villages um, or settlements themselves. You know, the people still are against that uh, about this kind of unification or amalgamation of the communities because they cannot possibly influence the decisions regarding their own communities. Also speaking, I would like to um, I witness the meeting of the uh, local village when uh, some people who actually changed four, three, three or four different parties from the um, block of Yulia Timoshenko Butte to Svoboda. And uh, I categorical support, I absolutely support Alena that the party has to come up with their candidate. But uh, he has to report to the people because he is going, he or she is going to work with the people. But who is going to call back this candidate? Usually, uh, logical, it would be the people who elected them. But now, only the original party organization can do that. So the people will never physically see the candidates to those original councils. Uh, you know, somebody will come to them and that this is a good one, this is a bad one, we have to call him back. This is a, a very negative thing, uh, in my opinion. And most importantly, we are talking about the monetary deposit, which is not logical, in my opinion. We are going to, uh, to, to, to add to that um, a kind of... Um, uh, imperative mandate. If somebody is going to offer his own candidate and his uh, point of view does not uh, correspond or coincide with the majority, he cannot influence anything. And uh, most important, they all support the idea not to create a conflict, to, uh, uh, let's say, law the territory to, uh, to elect, let's say, different purchases like. Uh, the um, village elder, because we are going to, to have some kind of majority system. The elder actually is needed when somebody doesn't implement or doesn't um, implement the decisions of the session. The majority, which is going to be in the council, is going to nominate the auto appoint the elder. And the majority is not going to support something until the and uh, elder is going to support that. Uh, the, there will be no elder general speaking. Or the elder will be kind of a member of the party which actually appointed him. In the majority of the things, uh, those will be the chairman of the party, uh, let's say, units. Uh, if they uh, actually, in other words, we are going to uh, go down, uh, down the slope when we... Uh, elected people will be gu guided by the decisions of their respective parties. We would like to have high quality councils and those members of the councils which will be trusted by the voters. Instead of that, we are going to have the party impact, the party influences which are going to report not to the uh, citizens but to the, the party, uh, their respective parties. And Believe me, on, on the uh, October 26th, we'll hear party such and such, so, so many chairmen, uh, percent of the chairman, etc., etc. And we are going to, to bring the, those who was, was kind of self supported ones um, um, affiliated with this or not party. But actually, we would have the, the situation where we have a report based on the quality. There are a lot of my colleagues which have doing a lot in the public sector, we, try, we, we, we actually asked them to please go and to be elected. He said, no, no, I, I do not want to compare myself with anybody else. I would like to work for my uh, village, for my street, etc., etc. Unfortunately, we do not have such persons among the, um, uh, the adults can, uh, candidates. Our association, no. Uh, there was a special issue when we had to give an opportunity to uh, to, 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 to give an opportunity for the IDPs to vote at the places they uh, reside now. There were different opinions regarding that, uh, the specific issue, but uh, globally speaking, if you know, we, they are citizens of Ukraine, they have the right to determine the authorities on the territory where they live in. Aren't you afraid that they, they, uh, neighbor, they, 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 um, the voters from neighboring 
community will come to you as a tourist. You know, we have to warn that the person has only one vote for the local authorities' elections. And those who were forced to come here from Donetsk, Lugansk, or the Crimea could have an opportunity to have a vote, and vote actually, have the ballot and vote for that. We still have to learn how to do that. I understand there will be some uh, technical difficulties and nuances with a new practice, but I really uh, hoped very much, uh, maybe the president will not support that, or maybe there will be some uh, possibility to introduce some other amendments. And I believe this, what we have now, now it's kind of monetary, monetary deposit is an evil thing, and, uh, and uh, aggra further aggravated by the um, uh, um, in, uh, let's say in, uh, this mandate, uh, imperative mandate, uh, people in the village, in the small settlement or in the community have to determine who is going to be elected. Unfortunately, now everybody will vote based on the, some kind of the label. They will vote for this or another face, but who actually is in those lists? Unfortunately, the people will not be very much concerned about that. Thank you. Uh, Vitaly Beskin, thank you for joining us. We actually invited you for a round table. We didn't get any information whether we were going to join us here or not, but we are happy you are here. By the way, we have the uh, connection with Roman Luzinski, who is going to join us after we give the floor to you. Uh, we have an agreement. Well, actually, until you join us, we were talking about the election system, imperatory, imperative mandate, about the uh, money the deposit, etc. So, in your opinion, Vitaly, what are negative or positive, um, let's say, uh, changes introduced into the election uh, system? Thank you very much for your invitation. I didn't plan to join you here, but it's very good that I actually did that. The matter is that the election codex and the amendments to be introduced, uh, they were voted for. This is a plus, it's a positive thing. If you take into con consideration the warning, which was actually well dated, uh, you take into consideration presidential veto. Uh, it was impossible to use the old uh, system, but I believe there will be a lot of tension to use this new system, how to count the votes, etc., etc. But I'm going to talk about uh, some key issues which have been, are being discussed regarding the local self-governance. And shall we are talk uh, this is my personal um, uh, standpoint, because uh, you were talking, uh, and I watched uh, the re response in the, uh, those who were voted in the parliament. There were different positions. Departization, uh, key, uh, uh, 10,000, um, this is a, uh, the evil which is not going to support the, uh, the stable development of uh, neither the parties or the further development of the local self-governments. Why so? Because my colleague was right to say, Ms. Kruny, what kind of partization, what kind of ideological division based on the uh, um, village uh, um, communities? I'm sorry, there are some positive uh, communities, but there are communities we have to think about the basic life uh, necessities of the people, vital necessities of the people. For sure, they, they cannot uh, de decide anything on this level, depending uh, on uh, how this or not party, um, uh, party opinion regarding the, the uh, land market. Uh, and let's be honest, why, if one year ago we started the kind of Joination of the parliamentary membership, etc., etc., whether participation is going to contribute to the development of the system. No, because we have one or one and a half mostly party system who are going to have the system or the network in the village, in the country. And, you know, we cannot expect that some young, young people will have another angle of their thinking, whatever. So, uh, in this case, in the east, in the south of Ukraine, the um, the, the party for the life, well, well, the opposition party will um, become the winners. So if you have this quote, the 10,000, the 10,000 will not work without the imperative mandate. Because taking into consideration what I mentioned before, if there is no networks on the in, in, in the country, everybody is going to be kind of shepherded, let's say, into the uh, limits of the boundaries of this or another party. This means that they're going to join this or another party and you have to somehow control 
uh, exercise control of the discipline, and then, then they will use this imperative man man mandate. On the one hand, this is very normal for the party. For example, the people will is going to take uh, on board some more people, but if you are talking about some personalities who actually ensure the result of the uh, election, but they will be forced to work within the boundaries of the party. This is not the correct thing to do because the most important and deciding thing here is the, uh, the activity of this or another body. When we had the, our faction meeting, and I told that Lena during the committee, uh, the correct figure would be 35,000, but if we're talking about 10,000, we need the imperative mandate, but you know, otherwise it won't work. But the imperative mandate will, uh, maybe, will entail some um, abuse uh, of the rights, because we will find ourselves maybe within the boundaries of a warm room and believe that everything is good and everything is directed at the development of local authority and local communities and the state but we know we are realists we understand not always it happens in reality so if this or another organization uh, based on the people and in initiative or not but we understand that we like the petitions there is a mechanism of petitions and the public are budget this is a very good thing but if you do not take in consideration the lot of mps uh using the activists uh, so to say they are going to uh, with their help to ensure the adoption of this or another uh, bill or the draft law and if this or not candidate that does not work uh, works in this or not the community boundaries but it runs counter to the party line you can always use this or another, um, let's say, uh, a thing in order to deprive this uh, person of the mandate. Speaking about some other things regarding the um, changes of the IDPs, this is a positive thing. A lot of people work now today, they pay taxes and they still do not have the right to participate in this process. Thank you. This is not about electoral code, this is about also nomination of elections and final edition of the uh, document is really great uh, concerning procedure and the issue of Donbass, it is done correctly and uh, uh, we will uh, work according uh, to this uh, code. I uh, voted for this code only against the uh, partization because I believe that uh, there will be negative consequences of this and also the principle of um, uh, forming commissions uh, if we are speaking about old and new politicians uh, when old politicians um, get consolidated and uh, then uh, we won't have transparent redistribution of the uh, districts that's why uh, this document is better than the previous one concerning procedures, but uh, there are some cornerstones uh, that uh, uh, will provide the benefit for the improvement of self-governance. Lerman Lazinski, if you hear us, I know that you are in the field, so um, you speak with people. What response? Do they provide about the uh, introduction of the changes to the code? Good afternoon. First of all, thank you for this platform, for such a discussion. Without any political purpose and political declarations, I would like to say that in Lutsk there were five meetings in the morning, and during five me all five meetings they asked, well, what will be the responsibilities of the regional um, administration and uh, in, uh, about local elections in Oblast, where they have more than 10,000 uh, voters, and where did they get such ideas? And I joined when Mr. Karine was speaking, and um, I won't repeat all those uh, arguments. Um, they resonate with the position of Golas and my personal position about uh, um, rules of the elections and uh, this will be verticalization and centralization and people do not understand why they um, are deprived of the right to self-nominate and people do not understand why in the program 
uh, uh, that uh, servant of the people uh, party, they wrote that there will be uh, open lists, and then now people uh, cannot identify who will be on top of the list, uh, and um, uh, at the bottom of the list, this will be decided by party bosses. This cannot be the topic for open voting. So uh, the rules that prevent to renew uh, self-governance by the lead, local leaders and uh, uh, whether we had uh, in, in Golas and the Servant of the People Party, what happened when they voted for the quotas, uh, uh, the lists were closed and uh, they want to buy or pray for this and they will pass and everyone else will um, do it through the quotas. Unfortunately, they won't succeed in this. Um, uh, also about mandate, about impossibility to self-nominate, to join the party no matter whether you want it. If you live in uh, uh, the region where there is to, uh, 10, 000, uh, more than 10,000, this is a strike. And also about uh, CEC responsibilities and some procedural aspects. So the only good thing in this that we were able to uh, decrease the money deposit nine times, and this was an amendment provided by me and my colleagues. And um, now, um, it, in Lviv, for example, uh, you do not have to pay 5.5 million to participate in uh, local elections, and this money now will be divided by nine. Also about uh, centralization, about uh, the formation of the regions. Uh, we have 490 regions, the Soviet system, and the key um, was it was based on the number of uh, uh, Communist Party members, uh, and uh, uh, now it should go in the past. Uh, and uh, also, we searched for opportunities to reach optimal choices. And this was without blood. It was done without uh, blood. And uh, what is not good uh, that some changes the constitution failed for example in the, at the uh, end of 2019 i would like to say uh, that they broke the logic of um, completion of decentralization because regional administrations remained um, the representatives of the president regional councils and they will be increased, and the deputies uh, of the regional councils, they will be uh, 120, and uh, uh, also uh, um, when I'm now, uh, now in Lutsk, and uh, Lutsk uh, uh, Council, Regional Council, Oblast, Council and Oblast Administration of Lutsk without changes to budget codes. Uh, the first reading is not a panacea. These responsibilities were not properly interpreted. And uh, uh, we have less regions, and this is better. But people locally with whom I speak, and uh, we know that the elections will be in 95 days, and there were activists, the leaders of the streets of the quarters, uh, quarters they, are, they uh, were ready to go to elections. Now they do not understand whether the region will be a threat to their independence. And unfortunately, there will be such configurations. There are leaders we uh, c communicated with. We supported their wish, uh, wishes to uh, go to elections, but now they are shocked. And uh, many people do not want to um, go to elections to be nominated. And also voters, they will have 
um, problems. Um, so, um, lastly, briefly, I would like to say, unfortunately, if we look comprehensively at the new electoral code, when we close the list, uh, uh, deprived people of which opportunity to self-nominate, if we look at uh, um, the oblast administrations, and uh, uh, there will be problems, um, and uh, someone may get political bonuses on this, and they may say that everything was done correctly, but in the format that we have on the 25th of uh, October, uh, we believe that uh, this won't help us to reload local government and uh, uh, people won't be able to implement changes at the local level. There are many barriers and uh, we have a lot of work ahead of us in order to correct these mistakes. So thank you very much for your opinion. On the 27th of July, the Territorial Committees uh, uh, will uh, um, uh, start to be created, and uh, we um, wish you to um, create these uh, commissions in a good way and to participate in these elections. And uh, Vitaly would like to make a remark. We have one guy from Facebook who speaks about decentralization, that uh, he saves something, and uh, they say that uh, there are um, administrations and influence of uh, the president, and um, we have these uh, regional councils, uh, even in Kuchma's time, and we had uh, these councils with uh, resources. Um, so uh, the number now is reduced, and uh, uh, budget code amendments were introduced, and now we say that this is centralization. So um, there will be changes uh, to the code, to constitution, and uh, state supervision is needed. And this formation of the regions, uh, this was done that uh, we will have proper state supervision concerning security because uh, it is impossible to act differently because we have war, we have separatism in the country. I believe that reform should not be politicized. Uh, despite parties, we should work for results. Is everything ideal? No. If you think that something is not right, you should know how to do better. Olena Boyka and Igor Obramyuk, now they are going to join our discussion, the representative of association. Dear colleagues, I would like to support the opinion of experts. If we are speaking about uh, 34, um, uh, uh, 85, uh, we support all your proposals, but about um, 3650, experts supported this draft. This is a liquidation of creation of the regions because if now they do not vote for these changes, I cannot imagine how CEC would be able to start the electoral process. We have about 100 uh, communities, regions that are in the framework of the whole region. In Zhitomirska Oblast, Narodinska ATC was created in 2015 in the framework of the region, and now there are two representative bodies in one territory, and this is not normal. Also, there are communities that were created in the framework of the three regions, and this is a dissonance. So, not only because we have elections, but there should be proper state administering. There should be done, reform uh, uh, should be uh, logically completed about whether everyone is satisfied. Of course not. There were contradictory views, opinions, and I would like to say that the process of formation of the new regions and uh, um, amalgamated territorial communities and prospective plans, this process was open. I attended 75 meetings at the Ministry um, of uh, Development of the Territories, and uh, um, they heard our opinion. and. Um, whether we had uh, contradictory positions, this is 
politics, but if we are speaking about experts, uh, the work was uh, of quality. So we support uh, 3650, and uh, we ask not to politicize this issue. Uh, 3614, uh, that was ad adopted in the first region. This draft uh, should be approved uh, in September. We hope for this. And uh, it uh, dismantles of all myths concerning the regions that they will influence on uh, amalgamated communities. In some way, they will be removed from budgeting, and 60% of uh, personal income tax will remain in communities and local uh, in, um, taxes will remain in communities. and. Um, this should contribute to development of the local governance. So we should believe experts, uh, professionals, and support those young politicians who, in this convocation, continue this reform. And together, jointly, we will continue uh, for the benefit of the development. So uh, we spoke a lot about the enlargement of the regions, uh, and uh, we paid less attention to elections. Let's go back to changes to legislation. Uh, association you represent, we know your position. You were against participation. You addressed President, uh, Verkhovna Rada, People's Deputies. What are other positions except this participation? Um, are of concern to you, and what uh, changes uh, are necessary in your opinion? Thank you. And so you started to speak about the regions and the budget code. I would like to say that our association, as an association of the uh, basic level of uh, village communities, we were not against uh, reformat of the regions. Some regions are done weirdly. There were not many discussions about the formats of some communities. That's why I disagree with the learner, because at the last stage of the inclusive, uh, inclusion of uh, this uh, uh, was lessened, and many decisions disappeared, and we do not know how some decisions were made. But going back to the electoral system, the decision on by, um, of the code uh, and the uh, we changed our position concerning some important aspects concerning regions and regional councils. Uh, the most important problem of changes to this budget code, I believe, uh, as an association, as a, a local governance bodies, we believe that the change um, changes were made without the opinion of uh, um, local governance. All Ukrainian associations were against key changes, especially organization changes. Also, um, the, uh, more than 1,000 people from communities uh, addressed the president. We had the strike, we had committee meetings and through the working group. We wanted uh, to bring our ideas to a subcommittee, but we faced a wall, and uh, I need to speak about this. I thought that there was a cartel agreement of uh, uh, parties, and we see that there was voting for the code on the whole. Some uh, parties abstained, but uh, about uh, um, all uh, parties except seven of the people, they were unanimous. European Solidarity and uh, Batkivshina and the uh, or and uh, parliamentary groups except Golas. Uh, Golas didn't provide any vote, and uh, um, there was some division in was uh, uh, in the seven of the people party. So we thought that parliamentary parties, they want uh, uh, to cover the self-governance. And uh, we see the process that partisanization is not a victory of those who voted for this. Sometimes I have a feeling that the state, self, uh, local governance, uh, uh, so that the state wants to have more loyal local governance. And this attempt of partisanization, there are some symmetric and asymmetric responses. Uh, partisanization is going from top and from a grassroots level, different regional levels, uh, uh, different um, grassroots level participate and um, um, 
also uh, one of political parties that uh, now provides some proposals on this. So local governance is searching for answers. Uh, so uh, local governance was forced to uh, get politicized, but it is not getting politicized as uh, those people's deputies who voted for this believe. And uh, there is not, no logic, uh, logical explanation for this. So we should start from scratch. Uh, we propose the threshold of 50,000 because these are the limits of the small towns so when, uh, where communities is more village-like and uh, um, 35,000, uh, but 10,000 was not explained. So uh, they even didn't want to explain what it is based on. Uh, this is a big problem. The centralization reform was done in order to create equal communities, uh, having equal responsibilities, resources, and the system of governments and logic. And now, artificially, we divided them into categories. Uh, First, they will deal with uh, uh, parties, and the uh, second will, uh, will be in different system of coordinates. Neither the parties nor people are ready for this. This partization, I speak about this because this is the main problem for us. Uh, this is multi-layered problem. Closed lists, party activists, and uh, not reputable uh, people um, will become deputies and uh, the heads of uh, party organizations will um, uh, be uh, ruling and um, also uh, they will have uh, um, in, uh, elections in regional uh, councils also based on uh, parties and they will um, and uh, the logic is when representatives, uh, they are deputies in these councils, and when regional councils will have party bases, if they have uh, to get, uh, together with administrations, they will uh, just uh, uh, will try to find a way how to uh, uh, do this thing. So if, for example, they want to go to Sinelnikov, uh, so uh, they will have these services locally, but uh, uh, those heads, they will go to the regions because regions will be um, based on party uh, basis. So I have a question to Vitaly, to people's deputies, to the members of CEC. So one month before elections, they adopted such fundamental changes. So maybe you should introduce uh, even more changes to return the logic to the electoral process. Undoubtedly, uh, part of uh, technical changes were absolutely needed, and changes are good, but uh, um, if you break the system um, on the eve of election, so maybe you should try and break the system uh, in reverse direction now. So do I have a remark as a response to the representative association? And we have a question to you about use of innovative technologies in the electoral process. We have many questions. Uh, is this connected with pandemic? People uh, ask whether these will be a, a pilot projects parallel to live voting. Please tell us about it. First, I would like to say and I would like to respond to Elena's speech about innovative technologies that can be used in electoral process. This should be done. For example, accounting votes at uh, precinct to um, at polling stations, registration of candidates, and other processes that can be uh, um, uh, be made. Uh, um, so um, also IDPs, uh, they may vote it. Uh, if they have electronic signature, they may 
um, having some documents uh, from registers, they may make changes and they should not stand in queues and in conditions of pandemic, this is important. Until 9th of, uh, until 10th of September, they may do this. There is opportunity of change as of today, and as of morning today. 1,000 people use this opportunity, more than 1,000, about 60% out of this number. They did it with the use of their notebook, with their computer, through the internet, they did this. And we do not have queues now. And in the regional administrations and local governance bodies, there is limited access. This is really good services. And also we have statistics. Some people ask whether will, there will be some violations. We will see statistics uh, and we will see how many people will change their voting addresses. We will speak about these issues. If we are speaking about technology, this is costly. And if some party organizations, if they want to do some violations to bring people from other community, I believe that these are fears from the past. They have some grounds because in 2000, uh, you remember that uh, there were some violations and um, uh, there were some fears. But now we have transparency and uh, we provide statistics daily and you may see what happens with the changes of uh, electoral addresses. If we are going back to uh, innovative technologies, uh, I would like to say that we do not have money for these technologies to use them during elections. We wanted to um, uh, simplify the work of territorial uh, commissions uh, in order uh, to provide them with electronic means of cal uh, calculating the votes. And there were requests made by SEC, but uh, there is no money. That's why there are no changes in this. And together with the donors and the uh, OECE, we work to help uh, commissions in order to uh, calculate the results properly with the system 10 plus, I call the system like this, in order to prevent violations at this level. Because human factor is present, sometimes errors are made and the people, they get tired and they work on the day of the elections. Uh, um, and uh, for uh, people work for uh, three or four days without interruption and uh, errors are possible. That's why we need this uh, means. And I would like to assure you that the commission will uh, have really responsible attitude to, to this. Uh, there should be trust. If there is no trust to this uh, processes and procedures, there won't be any trust to the legitimacy of the results of the elections. And this is critically important for the country. So we introduced these electronic means and uh, we uh, do not want to have these violations. Everyone has the right attitude to uh, this. When some means are introduced in the state register of voters, this is done with proper conclusions. And uh, the matter is I would like to call on not to politicize these issues uh, within CSC. You may check all this. We have open meetings. We communicate with uh, all the participants of the electoral process, and uh, we will have also communication with political parties and we will explain how to vote, who we may vote in order to provide proper information. One of the challenges is a deposit when the deputies of village and settlement councils, they need to be able to provide this deposit because uh, not in all villages they have uh, uh, bank affiliates. That's why we will address the 
banks, they should provide the services um, to have these accounts um, that will be open uh, to um, provide proper access to simplified through private bank or other institutions uh, in order to make payments electronically to provide this deposit in order that people who want to participate in elections be able to... Uh, when again, coming back to the innovation technologies during those elections, in fact, we are going to work with what we have because financing uh, funding is limited and to introduce some uh, services. We don't have an opportunity to do that because we do lack uh, time to do that. Among other things, since you don't have money for innovation technologies, we'll record that. Whether it's good or bad, it's a subject of other discussions. But whether we have enough um, uh, money, I know that some of the MPs did not vote for the amendments. Well, the amendments into the to the budget have been adopted. In fact, there are uh, enough money or funds. And uh, there shouldn't be any questions about that in the uh, now, even those amendments which have been discussed in the committee's meeting regarding some of the uh, authority or powers. We are talking about some kind of central subversion which should be, um, let's say, uh, given to the local budgets, and the local budgets would have to purchase or procure whatever, it meant, uh, whatever is required. The problem is that the time when those territorial uh, committees you know, it's very difficult to do that, to, to, to take care of the procurement at a certain level. And we could see, based on the results of the previous elections, there are some problems with procurement to purchase during the election process. We do have do not have enough, uh, let's say, highly skilled persons, if we're talking about the procurement of different material assets in order to ensure the, the um, holding of this process on uh, Record level, and this should be done by the uh, local governance bodies. And uh, I, I, as far as I know, those amendments have not been adopted. Well, actually, honestly speaking, I'm not prepared to give you the specific answer because on this morning we we we, we were given the finalized um, the warning. But most important is to properly um, uh, spend those money, and we are going to exercise control over this thing. I have a question to Andre. Well, actually, there are a lot of questions put by the local communities. They are in shock because they cannot understand what process they are going to live through, and there are a lot of questions on their part. And only this morning they published, or they actually disseminated the text of the new code, and we are waiting for the actualization on the uh, rather website. You know, most m m most is scared about this kind of the election tourism of the local communities. When when they fix the date, they, 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 I mean the figure of the um, voters in order to apply this on our system. You know, it's very difficult to understand that really. You know, this should be considered. You know, we are talking about August the first. Actually, we analyzed this uh, phenomenon and the, the first day of the uh, month, which uh, is the first before um, before the month of election. So we're talking about the first of August. Those are very expedient um, and valid amendments. So the, on the August first, the, the, the communities have to say what kind of system they are going to use for the election. Thank you very much for your answer because you understand what the communities are afraid of. And the second question, when you mentioned the innovation technologies, the uh, software, um, you know, the, the communities are waiting for some kind of the additional auxiliary uh, means which will help them to go through this very complicated or complex system of counting the votes. It, we are talking about some kind of auxiliary tool. I don't know. Whether we, anyway, the committee is responsible for counting the votes, not the machine-based, not computer-based. But I, I just imagine that the village election committees, it's very difficult to do that. They are working many years and they do not have any idea what kind of system they're going to use. So we're talking about a huge uh, massive or some potential, uh, let's say, courses or, tea, let's say, uh, education courses 
some kind of information awareness campaign to be in place because we really face a very big challenge going to count the votes. As I mentioned before, we had some plans for the modernization of the election system in the context of local um, uh, elections. We are, we, uh, we are going to uh, speak into the mic, please. As of today, there are no money allocated for this specific subject matter. And what we are going to do with our international partners, by the way, this uh, thing uh, was very much discussed by the uh, parliament. Uh, they didn't want to to attract the, um, uh, some foreign money. You know, there's some nonsense that because somebody can do that, somebody not. So, so we're working on the issue and how to create or to... And, uh, to, to offer the services which will help not only to count the votes, but in the formation of the districts and registration of the candidates to be elected uh, in order for uh, when we can use those uh, means or those tools to prepare the final decisions, etc. So we tried uh, tested that during the first elections uh, last year. I can't remember how many commissions we had about five. So I do hope that uh, this will facilitate the task of the local uh, committees. But this is not the resolution of the problem per se, because we have to set up the local um, uh, election committees and the special module. And I do agree with you completely. We have to correctly count the votes given the the, 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 the the offered system. This is really a big problem, big challenge. Elena, I also have a question to Andre. Two questions, actually. Number one, so what we are going to do if uh, the deputy will have an opportunity and obtain or get two man different mandates, can we talk about some legislation, legislation regulation of this? And the second one is the counting of the votes. Um, in the, uh, if we're talking about the norm of uh, 2015, we had a different um, legislative system or a different system. So, what commission has to do, committee has to do? They have to count uh, the results of this specific person or decide when this person decides what kind of mandates he, he is going to have. So, and another question: when we have the resolution of the Central Election Committee, where they're going to have this uh, 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 election. Can you give us the answers about that? So the procedure is determined by the law, and in fact, we expect of the committee, actually, we're expecting the decision to be passed by the Vukovna Rada and the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine regarding this kind of the um, submission of two to those um, authorities to adopt what is in order for us to determine the date of the first elections. So far, we do not have those acts of the cabinet of ministers of June, dated June 12, territorial um, uh, election centers in each territory. We did not have anything either from the Uberkhoven Rada about the districts. So, um, we, we, we do not have any grounds to do something in the in the localities. But we understand that they're going to be in place, you know. So my personal opinion is uh, we have to get rid of, uh, at last of this kind of the uh, Soviet uh, anachronism about this administrative approach. There should not be any kind of the decision of that kind. We, we need to do that in order to f move forward further on in the issues of developments and not to come back all the time, whether I would like to live with this or that or not. So there was enough time um, since 2015 for each the communities, uh, for them to decide what kind of configuration they would like to have. Everybody has the uh, equal conditions to do that. So they had to determine what they would like to do Somebody actually used this right of theirs, somebody did not, but we have to, uh, to, to forget about that and move uh, ahead. Uh, thank you very much. I believe that everybody agrees that uh, in the modern uh, Ukraine administrative system, and I repeat myself many times that uh, we lived until 
June 17, uh, under the conditions which have been were formed in t 2014. Uh, I'm talking about the uh, rayoning or the originalization. I would like to echo the, what my colleague said, despite the fact that the speaker signed the 3650 Act in several hours after it was it had been submitted, we still do not have this text. Uh, also, besides, I have a suspicion, and there are some nuances, we still have to have some additional consultations about the first elections because in the election code uh, there, um, it lacks the clear um, wording, clear definition what has to be done. Uh, done. A lot of people are listening uh, to us now. There are a lot of questions on their part and uh, most questions from the Institute of the Elders uh, because they actually cancel this kind of the institution. Let's get back to this issue, who is prepared to answer that? So the question is whether the elder can be a deputy who is going to appoint uh, the elder or the village uh, headman. Uh, maybe I will start. Well, it's very good to, to, to hear that Mitali will uh, speak his mind on that. But the experts, my expert's opinion is that this, uh, there were several, several proposals regarding the elders, how to hold the um, uh, elections. There, will be, there have been no expert um, let's say, um, uh, objections to that. Uh, I, I'll try to explain what I mean. Uh, the elder was a kind of person to be elected. The Constitution doesn't say anything about the elders. What the religious status but did, they made this person to be uh, a person to be elected. And this is, we are not talking about the nomination or the appointment of the elders because uh, we are talking about one person appointment or nomination. We are talking about the elections. Elections can be direct or indirect. Direct elections when we go to the, let's say, to the, um, uh, the election stations or let's say, and the we vote. And indirect elections when our representatives in the Verkhovna Rada elect for us. And I do not have any reservations or any objections regarding the election of the elders. And I would like to say that according to the amendments for, for 75, there will be some amendments about the local uh, self-government. Uh, and, uh, and they uh, also adopted, or uh, there appeared a new article. And I believe our elders should be aware of that, and uh, so that they had no have no doubts about their authorities or powers. There, there is a list of 13 uh, items of their responsibilities. So they have to represent the interests, first of all, of the territorial communities, to participate in different meetings. We still preserve the position of the item that the elders are members of the executive committee, etc., etc. Also, the elders have the right to participate in those. So they're the kind of broad range of the authorities. So also the legislator makes provision for the form. For the, for the elders, according to the law, have the powers. And the provisions, uh, regulations regarding the elders, which are determined by the, um, the broad um, uh, council. So what procedure are we talking about, which is all this is based upon? So the council elects the elder, but based on the a submission of his candidature by the chairman. So uh, they have to, 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 um, uh, to determine who they're going to work with, how comfortable it will be for them from point of view of communication, etc., and the high quality of the work in the localities. We know that some elders have been elected who are in confrontation with some of the chairman of the territorial communities, and this leads to some kind of dissonance. Um, uh, let's conflict in their work. And they were guided by the logic when they adopted the new amendment by this kind of, they, they tried to, um, to remove this kind of the, uh, uh, let's say, discrepancies or conflicts. So let's work. The door is open if we have some uh, entrance. The, uh, it also means that we have some exit for that. So. First of all, I'd like to thank the experts for the very cool, high quality uh, analysis of the amendments. There are two different plans. The first plan is based on the uh, administration. And Alina was right to say in order to regulate some conflicts, uh, political, some other conflicts between the head of the uh, territorial community and the elder, 
then uh, we have to do something when uh, this is appointed by the political body, which anyway has been elected. This is an indirect elections. The only negative which we can talk about, why they we consider some alternative versions, like election of the elders. So when we are talking about the uh, unification of territories, etc., etc., whether they had an opportunity to elect their own elders or the, um, let's say, the village, uh, headman who is, uh, will work with the uh, community, but there are some legal obstacles here, but maybe in this case we should have to elect all the elders because we had to uh, to establish the elders' districts, and then the question is who is going to form all that because uh, they have never been the case when they had to elect this uh, kind of the um, um, body. So maybe it would be better if such an approach to this institution uh, would be introduced under a different uh, threshold of uh, partisanization. Um, um, well, maybe during this election on 25th of October, in some of the districts, there will be no election of the elders. If we preserve the previous norms, there will be only in the council, then they will determine the elder uh, districts and then we'll have to spend some time and we would uh, lose a lot of time you know just uh, to continue what Vitaly has mentioned i agree completely my opinion is that uh, the election of the elders this is a kind of dispute, disputable uh, thing i mean direct election but when uh, the elections in the uh, communities became the kind of party-based when the village may not have their own um, deputy in the district council, council. There is a big possibility that the settlements of the villages uh, will not have their own deputies in the village council. So then who is going to represent their interests and defend their in interests in the new uh, village council? In the... Um, uh, uh, let's say in this territorial community, the elder, excuse me, um, the, the majority has to elect them by the local council. So it's a kind of political approach, maybe not the necessary person, not the person who was recommended by the local community, um, uh, whom they recommended, not this person will be elected. And this is what I thought you said, uh, 10 plus, but 10 minus, they will not ensure their representativeness or representation in the <coughs> uh, local community. So if the um, threshold of partisanship would be that everybody is subordinated to them, maybe we should not even discuss this issue of the election. But now it's a, a, a debatable issue how each settlement or each village is going to be represented in the uh, uh, community council, and uh, by the way, they mentioned that each village is going to be represented, each community is going to be represented in the district, and the uh, rayon and the oblast or regional council. Actually, there is a question: who, on who depends number of deputies in the uh, elder district in the uh, amalgamated uh, uh, communities? Maybe I did not properly uh, understand the question because the uh, notion the elders uh, district the district uh, where the elder is being elected if we're talking about the election district then the legislators made provision for that there are already established districts and we are actually waiting for the number of the deputies there you know, from the uh, amalgamated uh, community i mean yes we are going to, to continue to work with the questions we receive but still let's talk about the gender Quote, are there any amendments or changes in place, Lena? Actually, they tried to introduce amendments in 50 to 50. There was a serious discussion of this issue in the um, parliament uh, meeting hall, and even we heard the position of the party representatives. For example, it's very difficult in the village um, uh, councils, it's very difficult to have 50-50 balance um, uh, enough number of the women who would like to be a party member and work for the public interest. So the norm remained as it, it was before, three to two. So in each five person um, unit, there must be uh, these divisions, three to two, three males, two females. So this is according to the 
a valid um, situation. Some of the questions from the uh, social networks, whether the legislation has changed regarding the responsibility for the election violations of election system, how are you going to punish the, uh, the violators? Actually, we introduced some changes. We could talk about this, but uh, the first the, if you're talking about these changes of uh, to be amendments to be introduced into the well, it codes, they're clear a definition of those, but critically is how they're going to apply those norms. And I have even more questions in this case uh, because the law enforcement bodies and the judicial uh, branch uh, would have an adequate um, response to that. Maybe they should, should, they should take care of the preventative um, uh, uh, actions and to ensure that if there are some violations, there is a certain or a relevant punishment for that. We can see that the, the judicial procedures uh, were in place over the last few years when there were some kind of the, uh, trying to, uh, to grease the palms of the, election, the electors. So we are talking about some kind of corruptions, bribes, etc., bribing. I don't know whether the, 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 those sanctions have been... Uh, uh, strengthened or not. What we we failed to take in consideration in the uh, in, in the specific issue, tried to to bribe uh, to buy the uh, electors or the voters. We have to work on this issue, but we are talking about preventative actions and the awareness and the understanding, the comprehension of the part of the elections how they can can use, make use of the election right and not to abuse this right. We are talking the work with, uh, based on the materials which is going to be prepared and generated by the commission. We are going to talk about the sanctions um, against, uh, associated with this or another violation or infringement of this right. There will be, uh, there will be some kind of, uh, the um, let's say, uh, the division of, of uh, the different regions, the, the, the temporarily uh, occupied areas. You know, maybe this action, uh, question should be addressed, Andre. But the legislators, legislators um, actually specifically indicated that they were not going. We are not when we are not going to have some um, elections, uh, separate elections. But if you are talking about the delineation. Um, uh, Margin, you, you know, we have to be more specific. We are going to have the elections in this, to this, or the in other communities. We have to, to, to obtain their information from the, uh, uh, from, from, from the uh, um, security service, from the SBU, from uh, other, uh, let's say, law enforcement bodies, in order to avoid the possibilities of the local um, uh, elections on uh, the uh, temporary occupied territories or the. Um, uh, uh, the territories which still under the control of the Ukrainian government. So we are working on that issue, but the uh, decisions taken by the government of June uh, 12, we base our work on those decisions, we're preparing uh, for this election procedure, but there must be a special uh, document from the cabinet ministers submitted to the Central Election Committee in order to determine the date of the first elections. And our listeners would like to uh, need some more explanations regarding the monetary or money deposit, whether the deputies have to pay the deposit, what kind of the size of deposit for the, those of the, um, the chairman where the um, number of the electors is less than 10,000. So please, can you put on the screen uh, the table we had, yes. Uh, you had a very good infogram, uh, with, with clear information. No, 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 we are not talking about the balance. We are talking about the deposits for the uh, elections. Uh, for the Crimea, we have 20, uh, 250 minimum salaries. Then we are talking about the deputies of the village uh, settlement and the district uh, authorities, 20% of the minimum and the minimum is uh, 433, right? Well, well, attentively, uh, 943 grivna is the minimum. Well, um, this is what I mentioned, the issue of uh, the 
opportunity this now candidate to pay this kind of deposit. So in the country, this could be another obstacle, not about the availability of the necessary funds or money, but how they can actually um, pay that money, you know. Then we can see that the uh, village settlement in the city chairman, one minimum uh, salary, 75,000 uh, electors. Then we are talking about the uh, uh, deputies, not only um, the, the urban or the city, when we have this kind of 10,000 plus so district or the regional council, 75 um, uh, plus electors, we are talking about four minimum salaries multiplied by, uh, let's say, the uh, monthly um, amount uh, as per day of the start of the election process. Well, it's a special calculation of that. For each um, you know, district or regional council, they will have a different figure. But the basic, uh, let's say, um, let's say basis for the calculation for minimum salaries. Uh, well, eager, you know, is a kind of artificial um, division. Candidate or deputy for the village uh, council or with the 10,000, they will have to pay 20 times more, uh, say, deposit as compared to uh, to, 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 to the, um, the, the deputies with 75. I can't understand this kind of uh, discrepancy. I don't know. This is a, this is going to be impact. Can, cannot we actually change this situation in the beginning of the fall uh, or the autumn? We're still not going to elect uh, deputies in, the, in those days. Yeah, I understand. This is kind of rhetoric question. Alena said that this can, can be done. Uh, uh, me as an expert, we cannot, one year before the election, we cannot change anything like the territorial organization or the election system, etc. And technologically speaking, on uh, September 5th, they're going to start this process. So the issue who is going to pay, it depends who is going to nominate the candidate. If the party is going to do that, that means not the party member, but the party per se is going to pay. Actually, I read the law. And if this is kind of self-submission, -sub self then the candidate will have to pay himself or herself. Uh, only uh, this kind of self-submission, um, we are talking about only for chairman or the uh, those territorial communities where we have less than 10,000 voters. But once again, I repeat myself, in no case the deposit is going to be paid back. The, the party is going to nominate, but you know how the parties do that. They say, the party said, take the banner or the flag and everything else you have to do yourself. So this, we are talking about those who would like to be candidates, um, uh, be in the, include in this or another party list. This kind of disproportion is going to have a drastic impact on the potential, let's say, uh, potential uh, membership of those parties. And then uh, those uh, who are going to be on district level, we are going to restore the territorial committee. We are going to be responsible for the election process in this or now district. So this is a very simple uh, thing. We are, we are talking about the new establishment, new territorial committees. And I would like to uh, add that uh, the amendment we are talking about, the territorial commissions, uh, will be beyond the, the election process since um, the July 25 to September 5, we are having the period of time when you're going to submit the, doc the documents for the members of the territorial um, committees, which are going to be formed by the Central Election Committee. We are talking about the regional commissions, um, the district com the rayon commissions, and all these city, city territorial election committees. In this case, the legislator has actually made provision for another norm in support of what you said, that the commission which our um, permanent uh, commissions, they're going to be eliminated. 
and they uh, uh, maybe Andre will agree with me or disagree uh, and we are going to do that on the new territorial basis so we are talking about the new administrative uh, system uh, absolutely true there is no other um, uh, there is no other in interpretation of that there is a resolution in place so Irina I have the uh, 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 a request for the uh, Ukrainian uh, Crisis Media Center. Maybe some of the questions uh, we, we, we have, we even do not have the answers. Maybe it should be a kind of cycle, a series of such meetings, maybe um, dedicated to specific norms or issues, because we cannot exhaust all the questions within the uh, limits of just one meeting and uh, it can be efficient. So for your center, this is, uh, you'll have some work until uh, October. We have a lot of questions on the on Facebook pages and, uh, and uh, they, they, re they kind of, they, 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 they already, uh, there are some questions which you answered uh, already. Maybe we can also have some Time would spend some time to answer those questions and write and so to say based on the questions and all this can you can follow on the our website on the page of um, uh, Prodobre program and follow our press releases and the big analytical material which are going to publish after uh, the completion of, of our today's meeting. We have another uh, question. Um, I represent the Ukrainian Institute of Pol Pol Politics. And I deal with the issues which we discussed today. Maybe I can we'll come back to uh, the uh, fundamental issue during the first half of our meeting today. Restoration of the uh, this, uh, city district uh, council in the city of Kiev. I believe that uh, Kiev is limited as compared to all other cities in Ukraine because per one deputy uh, we of, uh, of the city of Kiev have more than 30,000 citizens, even more. And more than one year now, we actually deal with um, uh, four major uh, pinpoints. Uh, Ukraine, the Constitution of Ukraine, a new election code, which has been adopted recently, we are talking, we are talking about today, and the law in the city of Kiev. All those four laws are uh, contradicting each other. We base ourselves on the kind of decision, uh, the ruling of the uh, Supreme Court, but I believe that the representative in the city of, of Kiev has been violated. Even what was referred in the first uh, reading is, does not exhaust, it does not restore those councils. So I have some kind of uh, debatable question, but I have a question to the representatives of former uh, MPs and uh, whether uh, the Kiev citizens can rely upon the following, or maybe when this reform of decentralization is through, that they will have the reformation or it's a restoration of the previous system, maybe Magdeburg right. And actually speaking, what can you say about the possibility of, of um, resolve this uh, problem? Maybe I'll start. Even in our eighth convocation back in 2015, we started this dialogue uh, about new wording of the law in the capital city of Ukraine, Kiev. This is the issue put to us by the citizens of Kiev, by the Kiewites, that the district councils in the city of Kiev must be in place. My position is yes, usually we should have those councils. But there is a constitution in Ukraine, the restoration of the Kiev city district councils, this is the, within the powers of the Kiev um, city council. They have to pass a decision about that. We have the districts, but we are talking about the city district councils, and they have to uh, to 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 to, um, uh, to to say when those elections have to be in place, and so they they have a special norm that on the October twenty fifth we are going to have elections to the city district councils in, in those cities when they have it. If no, not for this uh, specific case, but maybe for the next. Uh, period of time, so you have to support this decision. Thank you very much for your comment. You can all support what you said. Microphone, please. Uh, okay, if they uh, set up the, the city district uh, council, those will be the first elections to those councils. Next question. 
uh, to know what is the uh, destiny of the registration of for voters in the eliminated districts. The registers of voters uh, is within the structure of the uh, so district's administration. This reform is going to be based on the further reform of the district and uh, this administrations. Until, the, uh, until uh, next new year, there will be no changes introduced. The, uh, State administrations will remain in their place and continue to work. And, and there is an issue regarding the establishment of central election committees. And depending on when they are going to be established, set up, there will be some changes or amendments introduced in the in those councils. So uh, you are talking about the the departments who work in the local uh, government, uh, let's say borders. They are going to continue to work. We are talking about the regional cities, let's say. Uh, so far, there is no threat to them. So, uh, you're talking about the dis district state administration. This is going to depend upon reforming of this or on the other, uh, let's say, district level of state administrations. So, what I can assure you of that indeed. Uh, we really, uh, this is issues uh, strictly uh, followed by us, and there will be no, uh, let's say, uh, uh, misunderstanding in those issues. And in our part, the Central Election Committee, we are going to be uh, actively lobbying the interest of the of this register to, to preserve such ratios of the voters. There are a lot of issues to be addressed, uh, but again, we have to talk about some kind of the concerted uh, work and the efforts of the cabinet ministers and the Verkhovna Rada, etc., etc., and those who actually nominate the, uh, the hands of the uh, uh, relevant administrations. But we would like, to, I believe that we have to do everything possible to preserve such a register. Some conclusive remarks, uh, uh, Mr. Eager. We heard that we have to continue on this kind of marathon to discuss some of the novelties we introduced, etc. If you would like to add something, please do it now. I would like to call upon everybody of the direct and indirect um, uh, participants in elections for, uh, to be very active, because in store for, our, for us is a very complex proce election procedure from different points of view. What um, Andre mentioned at the very beginning, we have to be very uh, much um, uh, organized, uh, and we will all have to do something about that. Uh, we have to join our um, uh, uh, efforts. Because we have, um, uh, we, we face those uh, challenges which we have never faced before, so we have to use all the opportunities in order to support and follow the uh, communities and their attempt to um, go through this uh, procedure as much efficient as possible. Uh, I would like to hear what has been said. May I wish everybody uh, the patience, inspiration, and the legal position. I believe that we are going to have the most complex and complicated elections in the history of new history of Ukraine. Well, uh, I have no doubt that uh, everything will be done because the, the new procedures, new administrative system, new election uh, system, um, it's very difficult for, for the Central Election Committee to, to do all that, to prepare all the necessary amendments uh, during the uh, time we have to, to count the uh, votes and the, 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 to approve the results. Uh, it's very difficult to do. I can actually foresee very super difficult process from the point of view of the uh, uh, counting of the voters and the confidence or trust to the results of the obtained, etc. So I hope that after, uh, since after October 26, we will start to talk about new election reform. Andre, I must be an optimist because, in fact, uh, you, you know, each uh, challenge uh, uh, means new opportunities, etc., etc. Maybe I repeat myself. Must be uh, a, a trust between the uh, subjects of the ele election committee. On our part, we are going to do everything possible in order to form such a confidence and, and trust through the transparency of passing decisions and the understanding 
extendability, let's say, clearness of um, uh, those decisions we pass. I believe there will be some additional explanation regarding the norms of the election uh, code, etc., etc., provisions of this code. We are going to disseminate this information. In the awareness and the inform information campaign, we are going to take care of that and the education of the members of the commissions. If we are talking about the number of the members of the commissions, the number will be diminished. If we are talking about the Territorial Election Committee, we, we are going to have a less number of those, a lesser number. And this, uh, 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 actually, we can talk about that with more optimism as compared to the previous admin, uh, administrative system. And this kind, um, and this situation we are living through now, and this, the, the, the situation when we live through the uh, pandemia, COVID-19 pandemia, and the quarantine environment. So uh, we have to ensure that all the members of the Central Election Committees, uh, they have to establish and continue and, and support the, the contacts with the published election uh, procedure in order to ensure and uh, the preservation of social distance, etc., etc. We are talking about the working group, including the the, uh, the composition of which actually includes different uh, subjects. We analyzed the elections in the southern Korea, in Poland, and Serbia. Uh, we are uh, we, we 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 actually analyzed different systems. So do not uh, think that. Uh, that everything is smooth in South Korea or in Serbia when you uh, watch the res respective videos or some informative materials. Maybe they have better situation with pandemic um, uh, COVID-19. Um, but there are a lot of challenges and I'm not talking about the legislative uh, base or implementation of the norms of legislation, etc., etc., but, but also about situation related to the quarantine and, um, and the uh, resolutions of the cabinet of ministers and they actually have to shoulder certain tasks in order to do all they can in order to ensure the safe and secure election campaign and they have to issue some resolutions etc etc we know that the overwhelming majority of the this ballot Stations, we are talking about different clubs or schools or other public um, establishments. Uh, it's very important here for the uh, government to, ins to, to, to ensure that uh, whatever opportunities we have can be used. For example, at the entrance of each of the uh, centers, election, let's say, stations, there must be special, specially equipped entrances, I mean, to can take control of those who enter, how many people enter at the same time, those um, uh, stations, uh, because the rooms must be uh, safe for the voting. And there are a lot of challenges and problems we face, but I believe by joining our efforts, uh, we'll be able to ensure the natural level of elections. But it's not going to be easy. Thank you very much. Thank all the speakers. Dear friends, today with all our uh, MPs, the representatives of the um, election committees and the local authorities, we discuss some issues dedicated to the and next election campaign, we hope that this will be was very informative uh, for you.